Hi everyone, Xplus here. After installing the first iOS 17 beta on my iPhone XR, I would like to share with you my thoughts. Remember to like and subscribe for me to make more content like this. Without further ado, let's get started. One of the new features includes creating personalized contact cards. As seen, you can create multiple contact cards. For customization, you can either put your face or a Memoji on your contact card. Font weight, font type, font color, background color can all be changed. It is highly customizable and even fun to play with. When iOS 17 is released, you can even get to share your contact card with others via name drop. Now about Safari. Safari's new private mode is locked. You can access it via passcode or face ID. You can also create multiple tab groups. Each tab group will have its own personalizations, such as cookies, browsing history, and more. This can allow you to focus on tasks better. You won't want to see shopping ads about something you have browsed while working, right? Within the tab groups, you won't be able to access the tabs in other tab groups unless you intentionally would like to switch to another tab group. You can pin your favourite sites in each of your tab groups without each of the settings interfering with each other. For videos, you can now copy, look up, or make a sticker out of an object within individual frames. This could be useful in some instances. For instance, in wildlife videography, identifying the species in the video captured. Messages get a new splash screen when you first launch it. In a conversation, you can tap the plus icon to view all things you sent the most. Scroll down and you will see other iMessage stickers you can use, which can be useful when you want to send a sticker quickly. Speaking of sending stuff, predictive typing now gets better. It can finish words and even entire sentences. Sadly, it is only for iPhone 12 and above, but strangely, I've been getting this feature intermittently on my iPhone XR. I was also excited about interactive widgets in iOS 17, so I placed the most obvious music widget on my home screen. You can play and pause from the widget, a little more convenient and better than simply tapping the widget to go to the music app. Note that it's also a little slow to respond to taps, as it is an early release software. There's also a standby mode which I somehow am unable to trigger. The check-in feature which allow your family members or your friends to know when you're home or have reached your destination. High messages, personalized replies and filters. Sharing location and viewing audio transcript. A bunch of sticker features built into iMessages and iOS 17. Recording yourself on FaceTime in the event the other user doesn't pick up your call. Reacting with your hands which produces animations that doesn't work on iPhone XR, only iPhone 12 and above. Airdrop enhancements that let you share your files more easily. Share play with close proximity. Journaling app not available now which allows you to reflect. Very useful autofill verification codes from mail and password sharing. Share play on car and making playlists together. Air play to your TV in your hotel room. Even airport enhancement. Downloading offline maps and seeing charging stations for a greener future. Just Siri, no more hey please. Smarter spotlight search. Reflection in health app. Privacy and security to protect yourself. Lockdown mode in, your, in case your phone has highly secretive documents and many other smaller features, including accessibility, PDFs, and fitness. And for information, iOS 17 has dropped support for iPhone 8, 8 Plus, and iPhone 10. So iPhone XR and XS, XS Max are officially the oldest phones supported. Will the iPhone XR be dropped in iOS 18? I'm not sure, but let's hope not. And that's a discussion for another day.
My battery is at 86% capacity and there are no warnings for me to change the battery yet. So its performance has not been reduced and the performance of this iPhone should be representative of the other 10 hours. Performance is relatively smooth with occasional hiccups. I've discovered some bugs in the software which are expected given that this is an early release software. Speaking of bugs, I've had issues with screen time. When ignoring screen time limits, I realized that I had to overwrite the limit twice. However, after ignoring screen time for one time, then restarting the app, the second screen time restriction disappears. That's definitely an odd bug I've never encountered before. Another bug was keyboard issues. After tapping on the search bar in some apps, the keyboard does not pop up even after multiple attempts. Force restarting the app worked for me. However, this time, I have not managed to replicate this issue. The bugs are relatively intermittent, so do take note and provide feedback to Apple when using beta software. No, wait for the public beta release coming in a few weeks later, or the public version to make sure that the system is more stable. Unless you have a spare phone with you, or you are a developer wanting to develop iOS 17 apps, I would not recommend you to install iOS 17 beta now. Go to developer.apple.com on Safari. Tap on the hamburger menu at the top left corner of the web page. Tap account. Sign in with your Apple ID. Agree with the terms and conditions. Go to settings. General. Software update. Tap on beta updates. Then tap on iOS 17 developer beta option. Then Check for updates again. From there, you'll be able to upgrade to iOS 17. If you don't see the option, force quit settings and open it again. General, Software Update. Tap on Beta Updates. Then tap on iOS 17 Developer Beta option. If you have any other questions, let me know in the comments below. Please like and subscribe for more content. See you soon. Bye. You can check out my iPhone XR review here.